This group of governors are about to face an important question. Exactly who is responsible for keeping children safe, healthy and happy in school? But I want you to just very quickly think about whether what I'm, the statement that I'm making is true or false. You should delegate responsibility for safeguarding to the head. And there's a variety of opinion. Yeah, you changed your mind. <laughs> it is technical, I mean, it is isn't it? It's my responsibility. Mm, but I delegate that to mm. the deputy within this school. The but the governing that. body have a statutory responsibility under Section 175 of the Education Act 2002 to ensure that processes are in place, systems are in place, that the school is delivering that. So it's the governing bodies, ultimately. You, you have the responsibility. Mm. And so you can't delegate it just no. to the head. Safeguarding children is a statutory responsibility for governors and one that's becoming of increasing importance. We're going to start today by having a look at bullying. Ofsted now assess it during their inspections and, if found wanting, the school's overall outcome can be affected. So how do schools ensure that they meet the requirements? I don't think governing bodies need to be unduly concerned about the new framework, but I do think what it is going to require them to do is to be more diligent in how they evidence the delivery of safeguarding, how through their self-evaluation form they are demonstrating that safeguarding is embedded within the whole of the curriculum, the school, the governance, and most importantly, how it's embedded through the five Every Child Matters outcomes. We'll take a look at Todmorden High School in Lancashire as it reviews its safeguarding procedures. I arrived at Todmorden High School just over two years ago. The school had just received a notice to improve and was feeling fairly fragile uh, with governance being part of that. Although safeguarding procedures were in place, it was clear there were several things we needed to tighten up on our work with. So at that point where I engaged the local authority to look for latest guidance and, and worked uh, and uh, reshaped the way we work as a, uh, with the governors. To work out what they needed to do, the nominated governor for safeguarding, Heather Hudson, was asked to undertake an audit. Supplied by the local authority, the audit tool provides a 44-question checklist for governors to use to measure the level of safeguarding across the whole school. You can find and download the audit tool on the page associated with this programme on the Teachers TV website. Safeguarding is, if there are grey areas, it's our responsibility or my responsibility as a head teacher and as the governor to make sure that we make it a better shade. The audit tool allows you to do that. Heather meets with the school's deputy head and designated person for safeguarding, John Botterill, to answer a few of the questions. One of the things I want to talk to you about is trying to get all the governors involved in the NSPCC training for child protection. I mean, do you think this is a good way to go forward with the governors? I think it's excellent because it will give them the background information that they need. They'll have a better understanding of what child protection is all about. And it's, yes. it's just good to have people on the governing body trained in this vital aspect of school life. When I took over the post a, a year ago, I think it was a little bit of a backwater, if I might say, that child protection was operating, but nobody knew how it was operating and that the policies and the procedures were not very well known. Heather met with my predecessor, but occasionally and not in any great depth. My challenge was to make sure that, that Heather was fully apprised of the, of the issues around child protection, that she had all the documentation, that she could be satisfied that our procedures were robust and, and rigorous. And are you happy about the recruitment and selection policies? I am, and I think there are a, a good number of, of governors already trained up, so that's good. What we need to do, though, is get them all CRB checked. And I think it's really important that we're in developing a relationship between the nominated governor and the designated senior person, that they develop a relationship that's built on trust and openness and transparency. And it allows them to build um, the dialogue. And that is what's really healthy. It isn't about 
the tick box. It isn't about checking everything that's being done, but it's about having the communication, the trust and the relationship that actually then reassures the governing body as a, you know, when it's fed back to them that actually what they've got is a really good, responsive, reactive school. Yeah, I'm very pleased yeah. about that, Sharon. Yeah. That's good. great. Good. So, all right. In addition, Heather meets regularly with the school's assistant child protection officer to discuss their safeguarding provision. It is absolutely vital that the governors are hands-on. If they don't know the school very well, then they're not a very good governor, in my humble opinion. They are the ones to be making the judgments about the school, not us. So that they can't do that unless they've been thoroughly briefed and know what they're talking about. Since last seeing you, we've now got a new uh, group that's coming into work with the students on a Friday lunchtime um, to do with drugs and alcohol misuse. It's a drop-in centre, hopefully starting this week. Oh, that's smashing. So yeah. what does that involve? The, the children just come to them if, if they feel that they're having a problem with drinking or if it's weekend and they know that they're going to be put in a situation where they're drinking alcohol. Um, just advice, how to make sure that you're safe. Meeting with Sharon does give me an overview of safeguarding the children to make sure everything is, is in place. Because I want to feel happy that the children in this school are well protected to the best of our abilities. Everybody has a right to freedom of opinion. Hands up if you think that when you're bullied it affects that. Why do you think that, Willow? Because you might get bullied for your freedom of opinion. Brilliant, good. So you might stand up for your rights and you might express yourself quite freely. Yeah, and you might get bullied for doing that. Excellent, well done. With meeting with Sharon, I'm hearing it directly from her and not through the governors or through the head or through the deputy head, but with Sharon. And that's important, yes. Another feedback. Heather also seeks an update on a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring scheme. The mentoring. Um, how is that going now? Uh, well, mine seems to be going very, very well. The kids seem to get some benefit from it. The lessons are going all right at the moment? Yep. Anything you're struggling with? Any lessons? Probably maths. What's up with it? You struggle, struggling, struggling in general. Yeah. So how's your exams then going? I mean, we had them um, a couple yesterday. We had science and we had maths and the mental maths. The mental maths were easier, so maths, but science were a bit iffy. Any troubles? Like homework coming out? No, I mean, uh, we used to get like loads at the beginning of the year, but now we hardly get any. Yeah, because you go break up soon, won't you? Yeah. Because I've been in doing some mentoring with the Good. children as a governor. Good. And I found it really good. Yeah. But I wanted to wish you was that uh, we're going to do, try and develop over the next few months or with it. Do you get some feedback from the from the students as well? Yes, yeah. yes, and we fill a form in and and anything they want us to tell to you know, say to the yeah. teachers we yeah. make yeah. a note yeah. of and try to help them in that way. The role of um, nominated or named governors is not a statutory responsibility. However, we have been promoting for quite some time that by having a nominated governor on the governing body, you've got that profile. It's the same really as having a nominated governor for special educational needs or inclusion. So it's really important that you have somebody that's identifiable on the governing body who undertakes training and gathers some additional skills in that particular field and then helps the governing body to embed throughout its provision. With her audit complete, Heather meets with Veronica and John to discuss how it's gone prior to feeding back to the whole governing body. We spent a whole morning, didn't we, we did. together? with Sharon going through everything, just making sure everything was in place, so knowing we, who yeah. is who and what everybody, everybody's role is. We saw Heather's role as checking what we were doing, what we were saying, so not just taking it on, on our word, being able to go and see the, the evidence with her own eyes. And that's very crucial because of, uh, the governor's role mm. is to, to monitor compliance and, and it's really important to actually see what mm. work is being done, but also seeking the evidence, like policies and procedures, yes. training, records, right. things like that, so that you know that it's actually embedded within the school. So it's really good that you've done that. Yes. The issue around um, sensibility and sensitivity is a very interesting one because um, hitherto I might have been quite offended if people are asking these difficult questions. And it's, it's a change in my mindset as much as in theirs. 
they've always been very nice and friendly and I've always been very compliant but what needs to happen is the relationship needs to be a very strong one where they can ask difficult questions if I don't know the answer then I need to admit that I don't know the answer because this is all part and parcel of moving forward as a school. And I feel happier as a governor that my link between the staff and the governors is now, I know exactly where we're going with it now. Yeah. I feel much happier about it. It's not piecemeal. This is, yeah, this is a plan that's mm -hmm. been formulated mm -hmm. from the top to the bottom so that it's not just ad hoc and you get the odd bit of information. It's a half a day, a thorough examination of our procedures. So I think some of the governors aren't aware of just what it involves. No. So this is my time now to make sure that they all do know what's going on and who is who. Because I don't think they all know even who is the, de who is the designated person for protection. And all these issues they need to know. So that's really been good. Just over two years ago when I arrived, the relationship between the school and the local authority was tense or poor at best, I suppose. The training that's gone on for senior leadership team, for the governors, for the senior leadership team of the governing body as well, have been absolutely top draw. Section 38 refers to the governing body's responsibility to promote the well-being of pupils. That's been fundamental to our improvements. It's a real partnership. The governor's commissioned an audit for uh, safeguarding the, the local authorities 44 point audit see where we're at and Heather I know you did that with John Bottrell as deputy head teacher so you're going to give that feedback to the governors now. The main issue was over CRB checks the first issue is to the governors that you must all make sure that we're all CRB checked there was another issue which also came up that I've been on a lot of courses I've done the child protectness awareness in education and when I did it, I think there was one other governor that did it with me. But I don't remember any other governors doing it. But I would propose that all the governors do one of these courses. They do learn a lot from it. It's, to me, it's the simplest form of child protection, but it's thorough. We can't really uh, claim to know anything when we start off, you know. And, and certainly the range of responsibilities that the governing body has is, is so... Well, I've come to learn that it is so enormous. So I think this is a very practical way of actually enabling us as a, as a team to get to grips with our responsibilities. And I feel it's been a lot more useful to the, the staff at the school to have yeah. us there supporting them, actually seeing what is happening rather than just getting it through Patrick or through the deputy heads or through whoever reports back to our meetings. For the first time, we haven't just got a policy that's on paper. I feel now as though we've got a relationship between the head, the designated teacher, myself, Veronica, and even the student, Sue Sharon. I feel now as though it's, it's not just a piece of paper that we'll look at and then it goes away for a year. I feel now as though it's going to be an on-running thing. And I think, uh, yes, it's it's alive. Alive. absolutely. That's what it's about, and you know, it, it's very important that students feel safe. Absolutely, yeah. And that we our... feel safe as practitioners, that what we're delivering is top quality, really. Mm. You can find and download a copy of the safeguarding tool on the page associated with this programme on the Teachers TV website. Mm.